All right, welcome back to video number two where we're gonna continue our discussion and demonstration with the differences between the Flash 2 and the Flash G. So on this first demo, we're gonna start with attaching to a substantial object. So let's look at the Flash 2. Remember when we're attaching to a substantial object, we're using the rope or webbing that's attached to the hook. I wanna stress that it doesn't matter if you start your wrap from left to right or right to left. However, I keep my escape system stored in my right pants pocket, so usually when I'm attaching to a substantial object, I start from the right side and I move to the left. So I bring the hook around, and then I place the hook in this orientation. Again, this is what I do, guys. Uh, you don't have to follow this verbatim, okay? You can, you can turn the hook the other way if you want, but this is typically the presentation and the orientation that I use. I make a big bite in the rope or webbing. I start from the bottom and go up, and then I let go with my thumb and index finger from the section of rope or webbing that leads to the hook, but I never let go of the tail end that leads to my pocket. And then I grab both the rope or webbing at the top of the hook. And I take the bite in my left hand, I go over the hook, kind of pull it down over the top of the hook, and then I tension that section of rope or webbing that leads to my pocket. That's it, that's what it looks like. Quick and simple hitch on the flash two with a solid hitching slot. But that's really my only option uh, beyond clipping a carabiner to the hitching slot and then and clipping back into the rope or webbing. With the Flash G, I actually have two options, so you could look at that as an advantage. Start my wrap, come around, I can do option one, make that bite in the webbing, and then come over the top of the, the hook and then tension it off. So I have that option. With the Flash G, you can see that it doesn't create any tension. Uh, on the gate, and remember the gate closes in, in this direction. So this is still a safe and acceptable hitch and use uh, with the Flash G. But if you don't like that, and some firefighters don't, because if you look at the, the webbing, it's a lot softer, it's more supple, it tends to flop around more than, than stiff Kevlar rope. And sometimes firefighters have a hard time getting that section of webbing into the hitching slot, especially with firefighting gloves. So your next option is, same thing, right to left, left to right, whatever you prefer. Bring the hook around, and now you orientate the hitching slot up, and then you take that section of rope or webbing and you snap in. Now, I like to draw it to the top apex of that slot so that gate closes again, and then I do one more wrap and I snap in again. So two wraps, two snaps, that's all you need, and now you've secured the Flash G uh, hook to a substantial object. So you have option one with that hitch, or option two, snapping in. So that would be the differences or the advantages of that Flash G. Now let's take a look at the differences using the Flash 2 and the Flash G as a descent control device for the burn technique. Guys, I can't stress this enough. You really should be highly proficient in using your system for self-rescue before you start moving into using your system for victim rescue regardless of the technique. But we're going to start off with how I rig the Flash 2 to show you the differences. Just like a substantial object, I really only have one option with that solid hitching slot. This is the method that I like to do. Uh, again, you have options and orientations for changing your direction on how you, you flip or position the hook, but this is what I like. Top of the hook now is facing the victim. I have the hitching slot on my left and the point on my right. Here's something that's consistent. I make that same big bite uh, with the rope or webbing, I push from bottom to top, I let go, hanging on to the end that leads to my pocket, and then I take that loop leading to the victim over the top of the hook, and I create that hitch. Very similar to a substantial object, except now the top of the hook is facing uh, toward the victim away from me, and this portion of the hook leads to my descent control device, which is attached to my belt or harness. I'm never letting go of this section of the rope or webbing that leads to my pocket. This is what I control because now the hook is a friction control device. And this hitch is what creates the friction. So this is the backside. This is that pinch or bite point. Uh, all I do is I release tension on this section of the rope or webbing and the weight of the victim starts to pull the rope away from me. This pinch or bite point can sometimes lock off, especially with a heavy victim. But all I do in that case is I pull back on the hook, which opens up that gap, releases that, that friction or lightens it up a little bit, gives me a little bit more slack to let the victim out a little faster. Uh, that's how that hitch works with the Flash 2. The big advantage of this hitch 
uh, whether I use it on the Flash 2 or the Flash G, and I'm going to demonstrate that, that you can use the same hitch on the Flash G, is it allows for a quick release of the hook. So if I lower that victim down to the ground and now conditions are worsening to the point where I have to bail out quickly afterwards, okay, and I need this hook as my anchor, I just simply take this bite point, come over the top of the hook, and then I pull the, the rope or webbing through the hitching slot, and now I've freed up the hook for me to use it as an anchor uh, and bail out. So it's a very, very fast, quick, and easy, efficient release of the rope or webbing from the hitching slot. So that's the method for the Flash 2. On the Flash G, I have two options, just like a substantial object. Uh, this is the BT system, so this is that uh, Congo carabiner, that two-stage uh, dual action auto lock that you have, okay? That big the gate has a nice uh, quick opening and release. That's attached to the victim. I can use the same technique that I did with the Flash 2. I can make that bite. Again, sometimes a little bit more diff difficult with that, that webbing being more soft and supple, but works the same way. Over the top of the hook, and I've made that hitch. Same exact pinch or bite point that you see on the back side. You'll notice that the stress is remote or away from the gate. Okay, so there's no stress on the gate. You basically have a friction point at the base of the hitching slot and that top apex. Okay, that's where the stress is. But again, hook still strong enough to use this technique. So you still have that option, you guys. Okay, uh, and what it affords you is a quick release of that hook. You see, it's it's almost instantaneous. But I'll tell you that that backside little hitch, sometimes that, that friction or bite point is a little bit problematic, okay? So here's the other option that you can use with the Flash G. You can look at that as an advantage. Just like I did with the substantial object, I am orientating that hitching slot up, okay? Now I grab, I'll pinch right here, okay? So I take this section right here that's, that's closer to me and I pinch at the base of the hook and I take the section that's going to the victim and I snap in and then I draw that loop to the top apex of the hitching slot and then I come around again and I do another wrap and I snap in. Now if this was a child or a very very light victim you could get by with two snaps two wraps but typically for an adult or heavier victim we do one more wrap one more snap. That's that triple wrap around the spine which again is is thicker now than the flash too and no stress on the gate whatsoever and all the wraps are on that thicker portion of the spine and for me to lower the victim i don't have to worry about pulling back on the hook now because there is no there is no bite or pinch point back here i'm simply just going to hang on to the break end of the rope and let the weight of the victim draw these loops around the spine these coils as i let the victim out okay always maintain control and friction on the break end of the rope the the difference here though okay and i kind of look at this as somewhat of a disadvantage if you use this method if you have to follow suit after the victim okay again conditions are getting bad they're going south so quickly now you have to get out it's you're not going to be able to release these bites nearly as quick as that that hitch this is how i do it i pull one bite up to the top apex of that hitching side and i open up the gate and i pull that bite out okay then i then i come around the hook i pull it up again Notice that I'm pulling the other ones to the base of the gate. Open up the gate and I pull this loop out, come around the hook. And now I have one more to do, okay? Open up the gate and free it up. So removing those loops, especially if you use three wraps, it's not gonna be as fast or efficient as just that simple hitch. But some firefighters just like the lowering control of the wraps more than, than the hitch. But if, if there's an advantage of the Flash G, that's it. You have two options, just like a substantial object. So that pretty much covers it, guys. Uh, we've, we've gone through the differences uh, cosmetically as well as functionally between the hooks. Uh, uh, hopefully you got a good perspective of that for both a substantial object anchoring and using these hooks as descent control devices for the burn technique. There are other techniques. I call it uh, primary deployment, uh, using the hook as uh, an attachment toward the victim and, and using your descender to lower the victim. It's a lot of options out there, but in the end, this video was about uh, comparing the differences between these two hooks. I got to tell you, I think they're both outstanding. You really have to try to get a hold of these hooks yourself, either directly through CMC or, or through some type of uh, instruction or training firm and, and practice with them firsthand. I want to just go off the face value of this video for your decision making. 
Um, but regardless of which one you're going to go with, I think you're going to be really happy with them. Understand, again, as I mentioned, if you buy the BT system, the the Flash G is is your only option. Okay, um, so uh, if if you if you specifically want the Flash two, then you got to buy that independently or, or look at uh, uh, the standard lever system. Okay. Hopefully, as as always, you found this video uh, useful, uh, beneficial. I hope it helps with your decision making process. And thanks for watching.